Hi, welcome to this video. Um, th this one's going to be um, how to set up a Revlock um, governor, so CSM Revlock governor. Um, had lots of people uh, contact me about this, um, saying basically how do you set the Revlock governor up. And so I'm just going to do this video um, to see if I can shed some light and make it a little bit easier. Okay, the first stage I want to talk about is um, basically the magnet and sensor installation on the aircraft, on the uh, helicopter. Um, basically, uh, that's obviously the sensor you get with a with a rev lock. Um, just the end bit of the wire here. You got a bracket here which allows you to mount it to the engine, and you get a magnet with it as well, which is shown in the end of the screwdriver here. Um, it's um, the sensor is, is particular to how the magnet has got to pass over um, in and in what orientation it's got to happen. So I'm just going to demonstrate how it should be, how it should pass over. If you look at the magnet, if you look at the um, sensor here, you can see it's like shaped like a D, um, flat bit on the bottom, and obviously the D shape. Okay, and the magnet should always run over it in that direction okay so it runs over it in that direction for it to read if it runs over it in that direction it won't read so say for instance if you put it into a t-rex 600 or t-rex 700 using the mounting bracket supplied i believe um you'll find that the, the magnet will end up running over in that direction that's why sometimes it, it, it simply just won't read um i know csm do like a 90 degree wedge block which you can um um put just under here which actually rotates this by 90 degrees and puts it in the correct orientation for the magnet to run over in, it, in that direction. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is throttle geometry. Um, when you, after you've um, built your model helicopter, um, one of the things to do is obviously set up your throttle geometry here. Um, the manual for the models um, normally give you a length that this should be. Okay, but because you can have lots of varying different types of engine, um, YS, OS, Thunder Tiger, or whatever engine you have, the position of this output body arm here in the carb can be different. Sometimes it could be here, it can be backwards, maybe up or down. So, bearing that in mind, this linkage here is never going to be the same for all engines. So, the way I work it out is very simply. Um, if you measure from the output screw of the throttle servo there to the output of the um, carb barrel arm there and make this length that identical is to the same as this measurement you've just taken, then what happens here is then at mid throttle stick you should have everything at 90 degrees. Or you'll have a 90 so if I'd say that would probably be about my mid throttle stick there which would mean that would be a 90 degrees and that would be a 90 degrees. So what this then creates is almost like a trapezium effect and as you move the throttle low and high you get a linear movement both ways rather than if this basically if these aren't at 90 degrees at mid stick it will be non-linear um, engine response could suffer for it and also governor response can suffer from it too. OK, the next thing I want to touch over um, is gear ratios. Um, the Revlock, um, the CSM Revlock Governor, it, uh, manages engine RPM. And because it's taking a direct reading from the magnet, which is attached to the fan on the engine, it's obviously measuring engine, uh, engine RPM. But as um, good old helicopter pilots here, what we want to know is what, what the head RPM is going to be. Um, for instance, on a 90 size machine like this, I'd want it to be between 19 and 1950, say for instance. So what we need to do is work out our gear ratio. And the way we work out our gear ratio is we take our main gear and then our pinion gear here, which is just off the clutch bell. Okay, and we um, take our main gear, divide it by our pinion gear, and then we get our gear ratio. On this particular model, it's 8.27 to 1. Um, so therefore, what we can do now is say, if I want a head speed of 1950, we take 1950, we times it by 8.27 to 1, and we'll get approximately 16,126. <laughs> well, exactly, actually. Um, so now what we can do is if we programmed our governor with 16,126, I know that I'll end up with 1950 on the head. Okay, one last thing um, I want to talk about before we enter the setup of the Revlock is basically the mounting of the sensor. Um, CSM supplied this bracket here, 
okay um, and basically what you do then is you um, mount the sensor on the bracket at the top and heat shrink it down with the heat shrink that's supplied um, and then in here you can see you install the magnet into the fan um, this is on a Raptor 90 so the fan has pre-molded holes for these magnets to go into um, lots of models um, have also got this okay now to the business end um, we're going to start the setup um, of this Revlock um, this one's a Revlock 30 um, this has got an inbuilt control um, for collective management as well but I'm not going to go into that into this particular um, into this particular video um, but what I'd, I'll just run you through the lights that you can get on the Revlock 30 before we start entering the setup okay uh, you've got this light here which shows whether it's in manual mode or not we've got the um, um, option to put it into manual mode or the remote game facility um, this is our sensor light um, these are our four engine speed lights um, there's a light here which is our armed light to show you when the governor is be armed and in control and then we have two modes we have A mode and B mode basically these are our different head speed modes or different modes that we can program for head speeds and here is a gain adjustment um, if we're in manual mode it's our speed adjustment but if we use remote gain which most people will do um, this becomes uh, so if we, if we remote, use remote um, controlling of the engine speed this becomes our gain adjustment um, these, these four lights here are, are basically where we're going to see our engine speeds as well and how we can set up our engine speeds. Now, I don't know if you can see this actually in the video, you should be able to. Um, there's uh, basically some writing underneath the lights and writing on top of the lights. Um, underneath the lights, on this light here, it's 17K um, it says, 14K, 11K and 8K. Um, this is obviously thousands of RPM and then on the top we've got 2k, 1k, 500 and 250 um, now what we're going to do basically is set up the engine RPM using these lights um, if, we do it with, if we do it down at the low stick we set up the bottom range, if we do it at the high stick we set up the top range um, as we go further through the video this will, this will make a little bit more sense so as with everything on the model helicopter um, <clears throat> When you first get the Revlock and turn it on, you'll get this, uh, these lights here will be cycling and they'll just be flicking across. Um, this one I've already used, this is not going to happen on this one because it's already had programming set. But what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to go back through the initial setup of it. Um, on the initial setup it asks you three questions. It needs to know where your tick over um, stick position is. It needs to know where your high end stick position is. And it needs to know whether you're using a digital servo or an analog servo. Um, I'll very quickly explain how this happens. Okay, so if you hold the set button down, like so, and turn it on, you get the flash of lights, then all the lights come on, and if you release it, you get the first light here. This is the first question to be asked, okay? Um, and what it's asking you here is to set up your engine idle stick position. I've flown this model so I know that at the moment my stick position, if I put it down there, is engine idle stick position. So I'm just going to tell it. So I've told it that. Next one it brings two lights up and it wants to know your full stick position. So I put my stick to full and I'll tell it. Okay, and the next question it's going to ask you is, is digital servo support? If I leave my stick up, it means it's on digital servo. If I leave it down, it's on analog servo. I'm running a, a Line 610 at the moment, so it's a digital servo, so I'll tell it the question. Okay, what happened there is then after I answered that question then, um, the throttle position went back to idle to say that it's recognised um, my initial programming setup. And basically now it's to turn it off, and that's the initial setup done. Okay, so after we've done our initial position setup, um, we turn the radio off and back on again. Um, you'll see, you'll notice here actually the sensor light is flashing. Um, what the Revlock is asking there to see is it's asking to see the sensor, so it's basically doing a sensor check. So if I put my um, starter in there and spun that, I think it's five times, um, hopefully it would read the sensor and the magnet, then this would basically go into the actual Revlock settings. If this continues to flash whilst you're spinning the engine over and that doesn't stop flashing, it means that you've either got your sensor adjustment is incorrect, so that needs to be sorted before you go in further. 
Um, I'm not going to put my starter in here at the moment. I'm going to cheat and I press the set button, and we go basically straight into the set, or we go basically straight into the the rev lock itself. Um, the first thing to do is to set your low end up. Um, I'm trying to explain this the best I can. Okay, the low end is the lower figures on the scale down here. So you've got a top end and a low end. So all idle and like um, full stick is probably the best way of explaining it. So with my idle stick down here, um, down at idle, I haven't got the arm light on. Okay, so I'm less than 25%. Okay, so my first range I'm going to set up is my low end. And what this is going to do is, um, this is going to actually, we're now going to set up an engine idle RPM, uh, sorry, an engine governor speed RPM um, in mode A. So you see we're in mode A. Um, so the first thing I want to do is that um, I want to set up a 1950 head speed because um, we've got the 8.27 to 1 ratio. Um, if you times the two together, we get 16,100. So 16,100 engine RPM equates to 1950 on the head. Okay. So this is what we want to put in. So if I press, so we're in mode A, stick is low. If I press set, I get 8,000, 11,000, 14,000. Okay, because I'm reading it off the bottom scale. Okay, so we need to remember that in mode A, so far I've got 14,000 set up. Now obviously I need 16.1, so I need another 2,100 RPM. And the way I do that is put the throttle stick up, or above the arm position. So you now see I've got the arm light on, okay, and I've got all the other lights on. And the reason why I've got obviously all the other lights on is if you can see in here, um, on my travel adjust, because I'm, I'm basically going to have my two engine RPMs on this gear speed, in this gear switch here. Okay, my travel adjust is at 100. Okay, so because I've got all the lights on, now we're on, we're on the top scale. If I read that, that would be 2000 plus 1000 plus 500 plus 250, which is way too much RPM for us. Okay, so I need to make these lights read 2100 because it's before we on our low scale we had 14,000. 2100 plus 14,000 is 16,100. So if I just come down on my trim. If I go well below 2,000, which is there. Okay, so you see I'm at 1,250 here, so I carry on going up until I hit 2,000. Okay, so I'm now at 16,000 RPM, okay, because I've added my 14,000 on and now I'm adding my 2,000 on the top there on my light. Okay, but I want um, 16,100. Now I know that travel adjust, there is every click on travel adjust equals 50 RPM in here above 2000 until I start getting this 2000, until I get this 250 light on as well. So if I add two more clicks, one, two, that's two lots of 50. So I know I've got 2000 and 100 because I've just added two clicks, and which would make me have 16,100 equated would be 1950 on the head. Okay, so if I drop my throttle back down again, okay, and I slap my gear switch down, okay, I'm now going to program mode B because this is what I want as a lower head speed. Um, obviously, on a 19, 1950 is for 3D, I'm going to drop it down to 1800 on the lower head speed. So once again, we've got our throttle stick down at the low position. I want to set um, 1800 um, times by 8 times by 8.27 equates to 14,900. So I now want an engine RPM speed of 14,900 to get my 1800 on the head. So once again, I press the set button, one, two, three times. So I've got 14,000 on here on the lower scale because my, my um, throttle stick is down. I put the throttle stick up, arm light comes on, and now on the top scale. So I want to bring my remote facility in the transmitter all the way down. So what do I need? 14, so I need 900. So it's gonna. So that's 1,000. So we need to be below 1,000. So if we go to there, I've got the 500 and the 250 on. Okay, which is 750. Okay, now I need 900 out of that. Okay, so it's 750, 800, 850, 900. So now I know that at low stick, I've got 14,000. And high stick, I've got 900. So therefore, I've got 14,900. It's going to equate to 18, 
100 on, on, on the head. I um, hope that makes sense with the high and the low um, stick facility of how you can get engine RPM on here. Okay, this little section is um, about tips. Obviously, I'm just setting this up particularly with the DX7. If I set it up, I've got a DSX12 as well. If I set it up with the DSX12 or a DSX or a DSX9 for that instance, you get a governor menu, um, and your governor menu will be linked to your idle up switch. Um, so sometimes what you'll get, like if I put this into idle up here, because well, we've got a V throttle curve, I can if, if I drop my um, uh, throttle stick right down you'll see it's still armed and the reason being is because because uh, it's on V throttle it's above 25% so I can only ever see the high value um, the high value lighting okay and if I want to see what my low value is I could either go into the radio bring the throttle curve all the way down and that's just to be quite honest that's just a bit of a a mess around. So the, the cheat of doing it is by pressing the set button and I think for three seconds it tells you the low value. So if I press it, it's arms lights off and it tells you the low value and then goes back to the high value. So that's a tip how to find your low end out if you're setting up in a governor mix for instance. Um, I've told you the other tip um, basically when you turn it on you get the um, flashing light here and you should be able to put the starter coupling in um, and wind it over a couple of times to the magnet to see. Um, the way you get over that is just pressing the set button once and you just go um, straight into the, um, the, the governor itself. Um, and the one la other last tip I want to talk about is um, sometimes um, you, get, you may get an engine RPM hunting um, and you can, if you're using the remote facility here, which, which I am, so I can program my head speed to a remote facility, as I said at the start, this adjustment pot here becomes the gain adjustment. So if you've got a hunting um, of RPM, you could try turning the gain up and sometimes that will get rid of it. Um, Obviously, if you've got any other problems on the helicopter, it, it won't mask it. You know, the Revlock will tell you you've got a problem. Well, I hope um, you found that um, fairly useful and not too um, complicated. It's actually one of the easiest governors I've found to set up. Um, the other thing is with this governor is I never ever use attack um, for my head speed because this is showing engine RPM speed, it's just a gear ratio to the head. So I never um, need attack to tack over my helicopter, I can always just read it off the rev lock, this is why um, um, I find them so good. Um, the, other, as, the other thing I'd say about this one, this is the Revlock 30, it's got collective gain. Um, so basically, because I'm running a single survey system here, um, basically, uh, very straightforward, what that does, it will pull off um, um, collective pitch if you over bog the, if you bog the engine down. Um, but that's um, something else we can look at a little bit later on. Okay, hope you enjoyed it.